You're listening to XS Gaming Podcast, a podcast for gamers by gamers, with your hosts Xander Scullion and James Grusso, bringing you something old, something new, and a little bit of nostalgia too. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Excess Gaming Podcast. We're recording this on the 19th of August. I'm one of your hosts, Xander Scullion, and join with me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Mr. James Grusom. What's up, James? Greetings, everyone. I hope you're doing well on whatever day it is for you. As Xander said, it is Sunday. It's SummerSlam Sunday tonight for me, which I will be watching as I see my boy Kevin Owens take the money in the bank briefcase from Braun Strowman and become the champion pretty soon. That's going to happen. But I hope you all are doing well and hope you're watching SummerSlam if you're into that. Or if not, hope you're playing some games or hanging out, just enjoying your day. You know, you brought up a good point, James, because uh, last night a buddy of mine, Mikel, actually uh, sent me some information to, to watch uh, WWE Network because he was telling me, he was like, dude, you got to watch the NXT TakeOver. He was telling me how, oh. <clears throat> yeah, he was telling me how NXT is almost like the old school wrestling, like the like the wrestling that I used to watch, you know, back before the two thousands and stuff. And I'm like, huh, I'll check this the out. NXT, the, the, yeah, it's kind of like their their farming ground. They do have some new talents. They also take a lot of guys uh, off to the indie scene. A lot of like Kevin Owens before it was Kevin Steen, uh, Sami Zayn, El Generico. Uh, so many of the top guys. They go through NXT. Some are there for a while. Sometimes they're there longer than they need to be. But honestly, uh, NXT is really a better product. Uh, I don't really watch Raw and SmackDown much. I do watch NXT. And the takeovers, uh, they have those about four times a year. You yeah. see corresponding with the big shows. And you're guaranteed to have a better show than the actual WWE pay-per-view. It's about two and a half hours, five matches, you know, no filler, like no fluff. They actually have just, you know, good stories of great matches i mean yeah takeovers are really the uh the ones to watch i mean it's a it's an awesome product i kind of feel bad for some of the guys that uh get moved up to the roster because you know they can kill it on nxt top of their game people love them go to the you know the main roster and sometimes they don't know what to do with them but it's it's different yeah. people running the shows nxt is a bit more for the hardcore wrestling fan though i think anybody could just enjoy a good match but they try to make the main stuff you know for appeal to everyone and a lot mm. of us hardcore fans are like oh yeah this sucks you know but yeah it's just how it is but yeah it's it's really amazing any of the takeovers i highly recommend watching just for awesome matches yeah i'm, I'm after today at work i'm actually having three days off in a row and i'm like yeah i think i'm gonna watch some nxt i'm gonna i mean it's been a while since I've watched like anything new wrestling wise, I I still watch like old wrestling matches on YouTube, and I enjoy listening to wrestling podcasts of like the old days and the, and the shoots and the kayfabe and all that stuff. I I enjoy that. I mean, it's a big part of yeah. my childhood. Very good one. I might have mentioned before they always do a older pay per view or show, but the turnbuckle, turnbuckle, turnbuckle throwback. God damn it, turnbuckle throwbacks wrestling podcast with phil rea and choppy uh, two awesome guys and they talk about a little bit of current news and every show they do like an old pay-per-view going from the 80s the 90s uh that's a really cool one you might like and they're really great guys too huh i'll have to check that out now uh stemming from from wrestling uh even though we can make a whole podcast about that oh, i yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little bit of gaming news now not a whole lot of gaming news has happened. Uh, one of the big things that really surprised me is uh, officially the PSVR has sold 3 million units worldwide. And, I mean, for this sort of ambitious kind of peripheral for the PlayStation 4, this is this is pretty good. I know some people may look at it as a flop, but as of recently, they've remade kind of like an updated headset. Uh, they've had a significant price drop. I mean, I'm talking like... At one point, it was $500. Now it's like $200, $299, and that's bundled with a game. And uh, I, yeah, I know... Usually those, the $300 bundles, I think lots of times, too, those actually come with the Move controllers. Yeah. Or you can get an even cheaper set if you don't have the Moves, and usually it still comes you know, with a game for like about 160 even. Um, you know, there, there's lots of good deals on it right now. Well, I was about to say, because I know... Out of everyone that I know, I I knew Ryan had a VR. 
I know our friend Justin uh, down Phoenix. He has one. Uh, Am- Amanda has one. I know quite a few people who have VRs, but the one person I know that enjoys it the most, I would have to say, would be you. Uh, so, so what do you what do you think about this with it selling three million? Do you think that this is a uh, a sign that you know VR could be something more in the future, maybe with next gen? You know, it's it's still three million. You know, compared to the amount of PlayStation sold, from what I saw, it's around you know four percent of the owners have it. Uh, lots of times, it you know it can be a cost thing. Like we said, we're seeing it drop. Uh, I think with that, you get more people trying it. Some people might, you know, they, you know, is there support for it? You know, am I just buying something that's going to sit on the shelf? And you know, while it's not something I use every day, um, as like I said, I do really enjoy it. I think it's going to stay kind of a niche thing. I mean, I think we'll see huge improvements and, you know, a lot of this stuff will be a testing ground, you know, for the next system. And, you know, I, I don't really know if it's, it's ever going to be like huge, uh, but I, I'd like to see it stick around. Uh, it was funny actually was talking with Justin, uh, a conversation, you know, someone else had posted about it selling an amount. I don't know if it was you, I don't know who it was, but, during the process, we're talking, and you see a couple of people, you know, they're like, oh, you know, three million suckers, or you get like, oh, it's a bunch of shovelware, and you get me and Justin, and you're like, well, you know, actually, you know, we're bringing up a lot of games, actually even told each other about some ones that we both had missed, you know, that the other one had played, got some good recommendations from him, and me and him both enjoy it. We're definitely on the, the pro side of it. I just thought it was funny, the ones talking the most junk about it, like, don't even own it. You know, exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's it's kind of easy to sit on the, the sidelines. Uh, you know, one time I was deciding between the VR and my switch. And at that time, you know, I, I went with the switch and I was very happy, you know, with that decision. Um, but later on, you know, as I waited, you know, I bought it from a friend, you know, kind of going with the price up too. I got a good price on it. And you know, I, I've loved having it. VR is something, you know, it's, we see it with the, you know, the, the, what is the other one? The Rift, and you know, there's different kinds. And yeah, the, it's like the H- HTC Vive, the Oculus Rift, you know, all that stuff. They have little things for you know, even the phones now. So just technology in general, I think VR is going to stick around. Um, I just, I, I don't think it's ever going to be a, a huge thing. It's not going to take over gaming. It's not going to nah. replace controllers. But it, uh, to me, it's a nice. Uh, for many of us, games are just an escape anyway. This one's just an extra escape, you know. It just it really is something that just kind of takes me away, and I haven't I had the nerves really to sit down yet and play Resident Evil, uh, which <laughs> I know that's one of the the top games, and it, you know that's a full out full fledged game where some of the other ones like aren't going to be as big as your typical console games. Yeah, they're they're more so, they're know, more do... like an experiences. Yeah, and especially yeah. I've mentioned before for like light gun games. Uh, you know, me and Justin were talking about those. He recommended one, uh, Mortal Blitz. He said it's a lot like Time Crisis in like VR. I looked up a trailer and I was like, "Oh, dude!" I'm like, <laughs> he said, "That looks awesome." So we were kind of on the same vibe of some of the games we liked, you know. And I said, for light gun games, it's just uh, it's almost been worth it alone, you know, for me. So <laughs> definitely, definitely. Now, uh, you know what's interesting about August, and you know, I haven't heard I haven't heard a whole lot of people like realize this but august man is pretty cool with gaming because we're getting in the next two weeks you know this tuesday we're getting the shinmu hd remaster of one and two and then the next week following that we're getting yakuza kiwami 2 so uh, you know i was i was floored that we're getting a game a series that a lot of people have not played because i actually did a poll on uh, my twitter on the Excess Game Podcast group page and on my Facebook, asking people, you know, don't be shy, be very honest, no, no judging here. But is this going to be the first time you've ever actually played the Shenmu series? And there were so many people that are like, "Yep, this is going to be my first time," which makes sense because not a whole lot of people, you know, grew up with the Dreamcast. Uh, by the time they wanted to collect for Dreamcast, Shinmu was one of those games that was a little bit higher price. Not not extremely expensive, but one of the higher uh, games. And of course, you know, uh, Shinmu 2 is on the OG Xbox, so that kind of... And it, it is backwards cap, cap, uh, capability with the um, 360, but it kind of glitches out a little bit. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that, you know, grew up, didn't play it, and 
I mean, we got that, and then we have one of the harder Yakuza games to find out in the wild for the PlayStation 2, Yakuza 2. We're getting that completely redone with the Kiwami uh, series. So, isn't that freaking crazy? And then we got Fire Pro Wrestling coming out just around the corner, too, this month. Yeah, it is just kind of neat, you know, with the Shenmu and Yakuza's. You know, we've compared them, you know, before, how they are similar so many people have heard of Shinmu. Uh, I'd be curious for the ones, you know, too, that never played it, if they decide to, of, of what they think about it. Me too. And, you know, there's different options, too. Like, okay, if you've played Yakuza first, and then you play Shinmu, like, how do you feel, you know, about Shinmu? Like, does that still kind of hold up? Because it is, overall, a very slower-paced game. Mm-hmm. You know, I love having all the fights in Yakuza, which just, it doesn't happen in Shinmu, uh, it's mostly like you know QT events, and you do have that one gigantic brawl uh, later on in the game, which is, is very fun, and you can go back to it afterwards and beat it and replay that. But you know, it is a lot of story. It's still lots of little things to do. It's just one of those ones we said before. I think Yax is kind of you know taking that you know big world. And kind of expanded on it and just giving you a little bit more. Do you still have yeah. many Shinmu loyalists that, that really love it? And, and, you know, I get it. But it's it's just great for that game and Yakuza 2, of course, which we said, you know, is, you know, expensive, harder to find, just to have all these out. And, you know, I'm sure Shinmu is going to sell like crazy. I just, oh, yeah. I'd like, I'm curious to see the, uh, the, you know, like the sales of like when they come out or like how they do. But I can imagine Shinmu is, is you know, really going to do that. Good sales, but I just I wonder if the I wonder if somebody that plays it afterwards is, would be a little disappointed, or if they'd still like does it does it hold up? You know, it's been quite a while. Yeah, I, I'm very curious about it, and um, you know, the best way that I describe it to people with Shinmu and the uh, the Yakuza series is like Shinmu was that revolutionary double hamburger. You're like, holy crap! That's like two bur that's two patties on one sandwich. That's insane. And then Yakuza added the bacon to it you know <laughs> you know you got the bacon now so you're like holy shit i already had like a double hamburger and now you have bacon on it because i mean yakuza took everything from shimu and it and that series is very important even to the yakuza series and you know took all that and i went uh, totally in a the same direction but in a totally different way of its own i mean i could see the comparisons but they they really are different games and you know i i'm really curious to see uh, how people feel about Shinmu because in my opinion it's a great game that hasn't aged well maybe with the new control schemes that they've updated with the HD remake or remaster maybe it'll be a little easier but uh, I'm, I'm very very curious and uh, the last thing I want to talk about before we take our break and this this is a new story that's that's kind of like beating a dead horse but I, I pretty much want to talk about on this show because I want to hear your uh, input on it James and that is the recent uh, Nintendo versus emulation uh, debacle that's been going on for like a week and a half now. Uh, it first started off, you know, a couple couple weeks back when Nintendo shut down uh, Love Roms, slapped Love Roms with a lawsuit because Love Roms was, of course, had a bunch of Nintendo games on their site. Uh, they had a bunch of marketing with Mario and Yoshi, you know, using properties that didn't belong to them for marketing, and they were making money off their site. And Nintendo saw that. Uh, as we all know, Nintendo's about to launch their online uh, platform in September, and it's going to be including free NES games with online play. And, and, you know, typical Nintendo, when they start coming out with something and they see someone else has had has like almost like a competitive edge, they go after it with blood. I mean, we saw it with the Metroid 2 fan-made game. You know, that was causing a stir. Then Nintendo came out of nowhere, gave them a cease and desist, and boom, we got Metroid 2 Remake on the 3DS like a couple months later. But uh, after that... Then EME Paradise, which is one of the biggest emulation uh, websites, they decided to uh, no longer do ROMs. Uh, a lot of people get this story mixed up, and they think that Nintendo went after EME Paradise, when EME Paradise was just kind of like, nah, uh, we see the writings on the wall, and you know the guy's been in business for 18 years. He's like, I don't want to put my employees through this you know, debacle of a lawsuit, so we're just going to totally change our website. And then... <laughs> And then the last thing was Isozone uh, decided to move their site 
they updated their website. They're like, yeah, we see the writings on the wall. We see what's going on. But, hey, we've been working on a new website anyway. So IsoZone is completely dead. Now you have RetroZone or, like, yeah, RetroZone. And you can download everything off there. But, of course, people are seeing that. And they're like, Nintendo shut down IsoZone. I'm like, no, no, they didn't. Just like they didn't shut down EMU Paradise. So, so what and all do you think about this, James? Well, on the one hand, I look at it like, you know, do they have the right to do that? You know, Nintendo lawfully? Yeah, and I, I can kind of understand, especially, you know, if they're using their properties and such for advertisement. It, it's something you kind of got to wonder if it was just going to happen at some point. And the thing is, is they're still selling, you know, what, millions of the minis, the NES, the Super NES. So obviously, really, I don't think it's been affecting them. And it all comes to be stemming from the online thing of what it has to do, but – I don't think they're going to lose any money, you know, because the people that are going to buy the minis, they're going to buy them. A lot of people, they don't understand the ROMs. They don't understand the emulators, and they're just not going to bother doing it. Yeah, it was, that was something that I learned really quickly when this big debacle happened is that despite that people may love video games, not everyone who's a gamer is tech savvy, you know, and I mean it's nothing – bad against that not, i'm not saying that as, a, as an insult that's just fact a lot of people you know don't understand what roms are or isos or you know how, how to get a pie working and stuff so nintendo and any other company has that audience for the people who will buy compilations who will buy you know clone consoles who will buy you know this that and the other they have the market for that uh the only issue that i have is you know, I think a lot of these companies created emulation because for many years, a lot of these companies never really cared to have any sort of gaming preservation whatsoever. I mean, there's so many games out today that you can download that if it wasn't for emulation, uh, we probably wouldn't even have it anymore. Um, I'm talking about like prototypes. I mean, there's like fan translations. Uh, there's some games that would be like still in Japan right now that no one would be able to enjoy. Think about the PAL region. Like there's folks, you know, over the pond that never got to play games like Chrono Trigger. You know, with emulation they can play Chrono Trigger because they couldn't play it on you know their PAL Super Nintendo. So I mean, I think this is something that Nintendo went full force because the online service that comes out uh, next month, which is like I believe twenty to twenty four dollars a year, which is insane. Uh, compared to uh, the Xbox and PlayStation online platforms, I mean that you're paying the price of a brand new game, where this is like a, a, a three quarters of the price. So, I, I I'm curious to see what's going to happen. I don't think anything is going to happen to emulation. I've had I've seen a lot of videos of people saying, you know, oh, it's emulation dead, is ROMs gone forever? I'm like, nope, nope. I mean, if anything, it's going to make it bigger. Because you're going to have people that will be sharing their ROMs. I've already seen people sharing full Google Drives of NES and Super NES collections just out of spite. They're like, you know what? Screw Nintendo here. Take some free games. <laughs> yeah. If anything, it becomes a little – it's always been like, you know, slightly undergroundish, you know, yeah. starting out. It's become more prevalent, but it could just go back to that way, more of – trading you know and you'll see them come out again you know it, it might just die down for a little bit people are going to try to fly under the radar but i think you know after a little bit things will go back to normal and like you said the translation of these games uh, we would have never got to play you know movie titles uh you know games like that with licenses that are just never going to come out ever again there yeah. would be no way to play them without having them all on the ROM. So it, it's really a great thing for preservation, just to people to have the games. Uh, I still can understand, though, legally on the same side of why you know someone would go after those places. I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but hey, I, I can kind of understand. Exactly. Now, when we come back, guys, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about gaming spinoffs, like um, spinoff games from popular series or maybe lesser known series, and maybe the spinoffs got more popular. I was really surprised by the response I got on the Facebook group page of all of these spinoffs. Some of them I didn't even realize were spinoffs. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. So this is going to be a really interesting talk. So sit back, relax, guys. Let's play some video game music, and we'll be right back.
And we are back, guys. That was some final fight on the Sega CD, which some may say is a spinoff of the Street Fighter series. Very much so, which kind of segues away really well into our main topic. And, uh, man, this break felt like it was about a week long, but... <laughs> yes, gonna, it did. <laughs> we're going to talk about some of our favorite spinoff games. Now, I went ahead and asked the uh, folks on the Excess Game Podcast group page what were some of their favorite spinoffs, and had some pretty good responses. Uh, one of them was from Jared Burns. He says, Gargoyle's Quest is freaking amazing. Taking a villain from the most despised and making him the hero of his own game was great on uh, Capcom's part. He says, also, Puzzle Bobble, a.k.a. Bust a Move, is another one that comes to mind. He says, Taito could take anything thrown with any characters and add the Bubble Bobble crew in, and it will feel very special. Uh, also, Justin Down Phoenix says, Mario Kart is a classic. Of course, it's become its own big thing. So much fun. Same with Smash Brothers, Crash Team Racing, and Mega Man Legends, which it didn't even dawn on me that Mega Man Legends would be counted as a spinoff. But yeah, it, it's a spinoff of Mega Man. Yeah, it's easy to, you know, see how some of those kind of slip by. Like Jared mentioned, Gargoyle's Quest. I mean, what an awesome series uh kind of mixed in a little bit more action rpg covered so many platforms game boy nintendo super nas all were a little different and i'd say it's a series i probably really even like better than what it came from you know with the ghouls yeah. and ghosts just a it's a it's just a very awesome one if you haven't checked it out you should definitely try it. It, any of the three are awesome to play yeah definitely also um bio phoenix chris he says heavily guardian being kind of a spinoff of Pocky and Rocky, he says, the games were a lot of fun. Also, Hyrule Warriors, which I love both series of gameplay styles. Uh, and the last one, or the last two, is going to be uh, from Game Grinder. Uh, Josh, he says, I think Portal would be a considered a Half-Life spinoff. Not only is it my favorite spinoff, but it's one of my all-time favorite games. Metal Gear Rising Re-Avengeance gets a shout-out, too, which, you know, I feel bad. I have the Collector's Edition steelbook on the 360 of metal gear Revengeance, and i still haven't played it. i played the demo a while back and i'm like man this is really good it was like a really cool platinum games uh, hack and slash with raiden who wasn't really known as the best character during the metal gear solid 2 era but he kind of redeemed himself when he turned into a robot um and the last one's from kitsharukin and he says uh street fighter 2010 he says underrated action platformer with an amazing soundtrack. That's one game. Yeah. I, that's one game I haven't played too much of. No, it's one I I picked it up on the twenty dollar rack uh, back at Toys R Us. Rest in peace. Uh, one of the decent games, not as good as say you know Blaster Master that was on the same rack. Uh, I've always kind of questioned though, like if that really is a spinoff. I think it was kind of named that way just to as a marketing ploy, really, which did work. Uh, it really has absolutely nothing to do with Street Fighter, but on its own, you know, at the time, and especially for that price, it was a pretty uh, interesting game. And just the fact that it has Street Fighter on it and the, you know, the main guy is Ken, I can't really argue that it, it isn't one, you know, who's to really say. But at the end, it was a pretty, uh, pretty decent game still for the price. Indeed, indeed. Now, I was, I've, I've been thinking about some of my favorite spinoffs, and uh, one I definitely want to mention that I really enjoyed was uh, Super Mario RPG. Uh, you know, that was a great mix of Square, Squaresoft, now Square Enix, but Squaresoft and their JRPG goodness with the Mario flair. Uh, that's still a game that people today really wish we could get a sequel for. That was such a good game, and it's not a long game either. It's a, a really good JRPG for someone that just wants to play a little bit of JRPG goodness but doesn't want to involve, like, 100 hours plus, you know? Now, you can really put it, you know, to me on the top tier with a lot of the Super NES RPGs, uh, being a fan of the Final Fantasy and such as a kid. When that one came along, playing it, I mean, it was really awesome. I liked how they, you know, mixed in as far as the attack where you could do like the double hits. So it felt a little bit more interactive as compared to your, you know, regular turn-based RPGs like Final Fantasy Dragon Warrior. It gave that little bit, also had that Mario charm. Square working with it, who were the kings of RPGs. Uh, you know, one of the the greatest Super NES games, 
still one that that you know people love and i mean you could kind of say some of the paper marios and such and the ones on the ds are i, I kind of consider them all in the same family while it would be cool to see just a super mario rpg part two like that i think that would be the yeah. thing that everybody wants but it's just an outstanding game yeah and i think a lot of it was just due to like licenses um Eventually, I could see it happening, especially with Square. Square Enix having such a good relationship with Nintendo with the Switch. I mean, Octopath Traveler has sold out so well. So, I could see that being something in the future. I mean, people would eat it up. Um, Also, another platformer that ended up getting his own RPG, and I have not played it, but it was actually done by Bioware, and that is the Sonic the Hedgehog JRPG that was on the Nintendo DS. I haven't had a chance to play it, but oh, I, heard, yeah. I heard a lot about that. Yeah, the it was like Sonic Dark Dark Forces or Dark something like that. Yeah, yeah, it was something like that. I remember I, I saw video footage of it. I saw advertisements for it, but it was one of those games that by the time I wanted to try it, it was just getting it, it's kind of hard to find. So I don't want to say it's yeah. rare, but it's hard to find. Yeah, yeah, it picked up a little bit with being a little bit more tough to get, and it was one I heard a, a little bit of mixed reviews on it. I think it, you know, people were kind of expecting just you know like Super Mario RPG, but with Sonic. And uh, since I didn't play it myself, I can't really you know judge it. But I've still always you know really been curious about it, and if it's one I saw for a decent price, I'm sure I would pick it up, you know, just to give it a try. One of the ones I really like a whole lot, and it was one of my first favorite games, I've mentioned it on here a lot, and I think of it, you know, as a spinoff, would be uh, Pac-Land, uh, you know, coming off of Pac-Man, uh, tried and true, very famous, you know, game, we all know it, but with Pac-Land, they kind of spin it off into a side-scroller. Uh, predating Super Mario Brothers, it was pretty inventive, you know, for its time. Uh, it really gave a graphic-wise. It just man, it it really brought life to it. It kind of made you think of the Pac-Man cartoon at the time. You know, Pac-Man had the the different look. He actually had a nose and everything. Uh, very gruff sounding on the uh, cartoon, but on the game, you know, he had this little hat and the ghosts. You know, there's a lot of the same things there. You have the power pellets, but it turned into a complete side-scroll game. Um, like I said, not not as good as Mario Brothers. It's kind of tough to really compare it to that. But coming before it as being an early one, I think it was a, a really awesome game. And then later on, we also got, I think it was just called Pac-Man 2 on the Genesis, which is a oh, very yeah. odd point-and-click game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, little bit different than Pac-Lan, but I kind of, you know, re- relate them together in the same formula. That was a fun game. I really enjoyed that. Um, Another spinoff that I really enjoyed, and some people say it's a sequel. I look at it as more of a spinoff, but that's Congo's Caper. I didn't find out until recently that Congo's Caper was actually related to the Joe and Max series. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes complete sense. But um, that was a really good game. That was a game I used to rent a lot at Rose's and, and uh, the little department store. I used to run it all the time. And I liked it because it, he had, like, the the spin the spin jump, kind of like the ball jump, very similar to Sonic. And, I mean, I didn't have a Genesis at the time, so I was like, man, it's almost like I'm playing Sonic, but not really. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a very uh, a varied series. It seems like there's quite a few games in that Joe and Mac line that kind of fly in the radar and you you forget what they are uh another one too for me and i'm gonna throw like two more in this one uh would be from house of the dead having typing of the dead and pinball of the dead uh typing of the dead was it, it was more akin to house of the dead only you had to be able to type so it you know it taught you a skill as you typed in words to kill the zombies Game wise, it was kind of set up the same. Whereas Pinball of the Dead, uh, we had a little uh, string of games that started on the uh, GBA of pinball games uh, with Mario Pinball, Pokemon Pinball, and Pinball of the Dead, which is even kind of the oddball out of those three. Uh, became a neat little system, you know, for games like that. And I mean, Pinball of the Dead was a 
very, very, you know, interactive game. You were still killing zombies, only you were doing it, you know, with the ball. Uh, you know, the screens, you know, would move up. You'd go into different areas. You even had bosses. And uh, it, that was one of the first uh, pinball games I actually played like that. Uh, and, and it kind of started a chain. We've seen many more like that. It's just them in general, even, uh, you know, like on the arcade mixtures of the uh, the compilations, uh, you can see how there's just so much more to pinball than how it was so long ago. I mean, Typing the Dead is just, it, like, if you're a fan of that game, it's definitely one worth checking out. I, I'd like to see something like that again or, you know, maybe have that pop up for uh, download on the eShop. Uh, another really weird one that I enjoyed I really kind of like Street Fighter 2010. I question to how much it actually is of this series, but uh, Silent Hill, the Book of Memories, that was on uh, the Vita. I think that's the one on Vita. There was a PSP one too, but the, yeah, I'm yeah, talking about the one on the, on the Vita. Vita. It was a, kind of an overhead game. You were setting lots of traps. Uh, it was just kind of off the wall, and I did hear it was, you know, going to be another game, and somehow they tacked it on. But uh, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, it's it's one I think someone like you don't. If you're a fan of the series, you might want to check it out. But if you're a fan of the series, you might actually hate it. Uh, and I do enjoy Silent Hill. I'm not the the biggest fan of it, but man, this Vita game just it it just really kind of grabbed me. I, I I liked it. But it probably could have been under any other title, and it, you know, it still would have played the same. And you know, we do see that, like I said, with some spinoffs. Uh, sometimes uh, just the name will get tacked on, but hey, technically, it's still in the series, and they're still good games. Yeah, it is something very similar to Tomb Raider as well. It was like that overhead almost. I think it was back when like Diablo three was coming out, and that was like the big thing. Like everyone was loving these dungeon crawlers. Yeah, because it it played like that Tomb Raider game played a lot like that. It was like over the head view, and it was more of a action based puzzler than it was, uh, you know, the normal Tomb Raider. But another one that I I really enjoyed, and it's definitely a spinoff, is Air Zonk. Oh, dude, <laughs> that game, that game is amazing. I mean, I mean, just the fact they took something like Zonk or not Zonk, but they took Bonk, and, and you know, it was a caveman platformer. Uh, very very classic. Uh, it's not my. I'll be honest. It's not my favorite game of all time. It's not the one I always go to when I play a Turbo Graphics game. But I do go back and play Arizona because I don't know something about like Turbo Graphics. They always just had really great shooters, and they, I'm a big fan of like the the cute 'em ups, quote unquote. I like to call them cuter shooters, but I'm a big Shoot, fan. Yeah. <laughs> I like to call them that. But I'm a big fan of that kind of genre and. The power-ups, the music, it was just, man, it was so good. And, I mean, apparently, like, Zonk is, like, Bonk's great-great-great-great-grandson or something like that. Yeah, definitely a, a, a future a future version. That was one uh, my, my brother EJ had given me that on the TurboGrafx because he had got the uh, PC Engine version. And, you know, that's not, like, a, a cheap game, so it's one I, you know, I never would have, like, bought on my own, I'm sure, but I remember getting it, and it was one I played. You know how sometimes you play a game and it's really good, and you can almost kind of justify the price? Like, it yeah. still shouldn't be that high, but, like, I can kind of understand because at least this is a good game. It's one if you spent the money on, I don't think you'd be let down. Um, just super fun. I mean, it jumped up. Uh, in the past couple of years, like I'd say uh, that one along with Boogie Wing by Data East have, like, jumped up to be two of my favorite uh shooters definitely to me both kind of like cuter shooters uh just really really fun i mean it's a game you can just jump into pick up and play it's tough but it's still kind of forgiving uh all the transformations that he has like all the special weapons like every there's always something going on and something yeah. changing in that game that just really keeps you wanting to go back and play it i mean it is really an amazing game I, I do, and I do love it when uh, a series does a spinoff that's like kind of genre differences. Like it's not just a spinoff, but it's also a different genre. Um, and I mean, this is kind of a safe one to talk about uh, because the genre is not that much different from where the game originated from. But Mortal Kombat Shaolin monks on the PS2 oh. and Xbox, dude. You want to talk yeah. about <laughs> a really fun two-player co-op beat 'em up? Shaolin Monks all the way, man. 
I I freaking love that game. And what was cool is you could you could actually unlock Mortal Kombat two on it, which was kind of cool. And you could play as like Scorpion and Sub Zero instead of uh, Kun Lao and Liu Kang. And I always thought it was kind of funny. There was a little bit of controversy with that game because there was a part where instead of Scorpion saying like "Get over here," he said uh, he says "Get the fuck over here." <laughs> he says that in Shaolin Monks. I remember that was a big controversy, and everyone's like, "I don't like that." He said that. <laughs> I was like. It kind of caught me off guard, but I was indifferent to it, you know? Such a foul-mouthed little scorpion there. <laughs> now, that one was super fun. I played that so much. Uh, never beat it because, man, even co-op, it gets tough. But it's what, uh, you know, Sub-Zero mythologies. It's kind of like what you wanted that to be. Oh, uh, it ended up being, you know, one of the best, you know, co-op beat-em-ups on that generation of systems. It was one, you know, we got a few here and there there's a, a lot of titles that i did like but that one man it's still it added everything into it where you still had the fatalities the blood mortal Kombat, only in 2d form i know there is a, a kind of a hack game someone made that uses all the characters but it's a uh, it's you know a little bit more basic like an earlier one uh it, you know it would kind of be final fight ish uh, around like that level but uh someone had took it and hacked it out to make a side scrolling Mortal Kombat game, which I think, you know, did predate Shaolin Monks, which was, uh, I've never played. I've seen clips of it. It does look awesome, but I mean, Shaolin Monks is a great one. I, I'd like to see, I don't know if there's any rights issues with that. That would be a cool one to see kind of like a redo version of because, you know, Mortal Kombat has, you know, risen up again and people do still love that series. And I think it's a game a lot of people might have missed. Maybe even just a brand new version of it. I'd be all for yeah. that because, I mean, it just, it had everything you really wanted in a beat em up, but it just it gave you that Mortal Kombat lore mixed in with it too. It just you know turned out into an awesome game. Yeah, uh, I also like uh, one in a series of games, Final Fantasy. I really liked Final Fantasy Theat Rhythm on oh, yeah. uh, the 3DS. Uh, very fun, you know, uh, musical based game. Uh, if you're a fan of those, it, and especially if you love music in the Final Fantasy series, which you know many do, um, it just had an awesome array of the soundtrack of the game mixed in. Um, I, I think if you like Final Fantasy, you could definitely find some uh, some fun in that game. And even if you don't, if you like rhythm-based games, uh, that one just turned out to a, a really fun game. Yeah, that game was really surprising. I remember when it first came out, and I was like. I was kind of creeped out by the character models. I'm not going to lie because they look kind of like <laughs> they kind of look like uh, freaking puppet dolls or something. I'm like, I don't know about this, but I really love Final Fantasy music. And I remember I bought I I think you and I both bought it day one when it first came out because I think we were messaging each other about like texting each other, and I was like, man, this game is a lot more fun than it should be. So much more fun. Yeah, I still have the uh, the special stylus. It came with yeah. like its own little uh, white stylus that you could put stickers on the top of it, and uh, I I still have that actually sitting here on my desk right now. <laughs> so so I mean like we've talked about some some spinoffs that we that we do like. Uh, do you have any in your mind that you probably don't like? Like any spinoffs <sighs> that you play that you're like ah oh, this isn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Wow, um, man. I hadn't thought about bad ones. <laughs> they get hit off the top of my head, and I can't think of one. Uh, yeah. Do you have any in particular? And I'm going to try to think on that for a second. <laughs> um, I'm not a big fan of Sonic Spinball. I, you know, I don't know what it is, but I still haven't beaten the first stage to Sonic Spinball. I'm just not a big fan of it. No, that's one. Uh, you know, I don't think I've played that one. Uh. That one, maybe they didn't go far enough into, like, pinball land, you know? Yeah. Like, it should have had a bit more pinball to it. Um, man, I, I just mean, can't think of one right now. I mean, <laughs> hey, you, you can always take the safe route and just say all the Mario educational games. You know, any, anything educational is bad. Well, the thing is, though, I actually enjoy those, though. That's all, <laughs> I'll, I'll be the oddball. I, I had fun with the Mario's time machine. Um I did like that one. Yeah. Damn, I feel uh, man, I feel bad. I catch, I, I cannot think of one off the top well, of my head. I'll probably come up with a billion in a little bit. I'm yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah. there they all are. <laughs> well, to, to be to be honest, I did kind of just throw it at you, but 
How about our listeners in the comments? Tell us some of your least favorite spinoffs. Tell us in the comments below. We'd love to hear from that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, speaking of Mario educational games, I will say quickly, though, if you were like me and you were burned by Mario's missing, I mean, I called out of school that day. I played hooky. I was like telling my mom I was so sick because that game was getting rented so quickly. Like, it was just was never in stock at Blockbuster. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go there to Blockbuster while all the other kids are at school and I'll be able to rent it. And I did, and it was an educational game. I'm like, how ironic. I got called out of school, and I got an educational game. And I was like, oh, my God. But there's these are really good uh, fan-made uh, game called Mario's Missing Done Right, and that one really is done right. It's a, it's a standard 2D Mario World platformer with... You play as Luigi, you're trying to find Mario. But they add a bunch of little different stuff to it. They add a lot of music from, like, Castlevania and uh, Zelda. They've added some music from Mario RPG. They've added certain, you know, monsters and elements. They've remixed some of the music. And it's it's free. I think you can still find it on romhacking.net. I believe that's where you can find it. It's it's really good. It's really good. That sounds cool. Oh, I, I will. I'll, I'll give you one here since it is one of my favorite series. This is a perfect one because I actually have it on my list. I just didn't really think of it as necessarily a bad one, but it's one I don't care for. It is Yakuza Dead Souls. Yeah. Uh, I am, I'm not a fan of that game. It, it's one of those ones that when I told people about Yakuza, I'd always tell them about it. I had certain ones I'd pick. You know, like I wouldn't necessarily say, hey, start with three. I'd say, hey, start with four. Start with one or two if you can. Uh, avoid Dead Souls. And if you're really into the series, uh, you might get a little bit of fun out of Dead Souls. It was one of the first times you could play as Majima, which, you know, that that was kind of cool. But it's uh, it's very basic. It's it's not like, yeah, because you're, you're killing zombies. I know it, it sounds really cool, but the, the shooting is very basic. kind of feels like Resident Evil 1. Like where you just kind of aim and shoot. There's really no like reticule or, or proper aiming. Um, you just kill a lot of zombies, and you know you're blocked out of an area till you move on to the next one. You do have some stores, but it just, eh, you know, I like I said, I, I like the stuff with Majima. Like he's watching a zombie movie on TV, and he re- he's like, I wish this was real. And suddenly zombies are everywhere, and he's getting a kick out of it because he's a damn psycho. Um, I did enjoy that. You know, I, I can't say it's truly bad, but it's it's definitely not like the rest of the series. So in turn, like if you actually don't like Yakuza, you might find some enjoyment at Dead Souls. It it was a cash in on the popularity of zombies at the time. It was also the reason it took so long for us to get part five, which I admit I was kind of bitter about. Um, that was the reason that game almost killed the yakuza series over here uh in america which is why i don't really have a problem throwing it on the bad list um it it really did but luckily you know the fans everybody came through more people are discovering it more people are loving yakuza and that game can just stay forgotten back in time where it belongs and on another note as a side game it's one i've never played but i've always been curious about is the black panther series no not that one not the marvel one but it was a PSP series stemmed off from Yakuza as you're a younger guy in one of the gangs and you're kind of rising up. Uh, there was two of them. It actually has – its fighting system is based more off of the uh, like the Def Jam Vendetta series. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I don't know if, it, if EA had something to do with it. Or they just kind of took from that. But you have like up to 20 different fighting styles. Um I, I imagine there might be a translated, you know, emulator somewhere, which like that would be really cool to play because I never it, it was in Japanese and I just I can't play Yakuza games without English in them. Like it's just it's too tough. But uh, there is a two series. Uh, I don't think it you know we'll ever see it much like the samurai based ones uh, that stemmed off like Kenzan. Uh, and the other one, I really, as much as I hate to say it, I don't think we'll ever see those. But I think we'll see those before Black Panther. But, it, you know, it had its time, you know, just two on the PSP, and then it, then it was done. I don't even think any of the main characters appeared in it at all. Just, like, completely off to the side. Uh, but you can definitely, you know, read up on it and see videos. And it's it's something to check into that y'all, you know, might not have known about that are just getting to Yakuza now. 
I mean, it, it is possible. I mean, I've been I did the math, and since the since the release of Yakuza Zero and how popular that's gotten, we've been getting like two Yakuza games a year, and because uh, I mean, we got Yakuza Zero and Yakuza Kiwami last year, and this year we got six in Kiwami too, and. Uh, August 28th, they're making a special announcement on Yakuza, doing a live stream. I'm like, okay, well, this is probably going to be like the Western release of Yakuza 3 HD and maybe the Yakuza Online game. It's like, so, if they if they stay on par with this, there's plenty of Yakuza games that we haven't played yet that they can kind of fill that gap of two Yakuza games a year, which is going to be crazy to think about that. You know, a, a lot of people do want the uh, the samurai-based ones. Like, that'd be cool to it, at least get the newest one that had come out. Um, Ishin, Ishin was the one. I, I have Ken's on on PS3, and I, I did try to play it, but man, it's it's tough. I mean, shoot, if we get some kind of double pack like that, kind of like a Shinmu 1 and 2, and do like Kenzon and Ishin, like that would be really cool. I'd imagine seeing those before Black Panther, and at the end of the day, I'll probably get fucking Dead Souls before I'll get any of the ones I actually want, so that's just how life is, you know? <laughs> yeah, I always, always feel kind of bad when someone's like, yeah, man, I got a Yakuza game. I'm, I want to finally start the series. I'm like, oh, which one did you get? They're like, Dead Souls, and I'm like, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I said. Some someone out there, you you might dig it, but it's just that's that's not. It's just not Yakuza. It's not what it's about. It's just so different. Uh, I just that's that's the one I didn't play too much of, and I still just as you can tell, I'm just and I admit I'm a little bitter about that game still. It just it messed up stuff for a long time for me, but it's all good now. It's all better. Yakuza is everywhere. So indeed, indeed, just like Majima. <laughs> yeah, Majima everywhere. Now, uh, before we close the show, uh, we are going to talk about games we've been playing recently, and uh, it's kind of this can be kind of interesting because. Uh, the game I'm be talking about technically hasn't came out yet, but it's out, and that is uh, Shinmu uh, One and Two. I've been playing that, and you know, man, it's like one of those things. Like I made a post on my XS Gaming Podcast group page. I made a post on that, and I was like, "Tell me, is this going to be your first time ever playing Shinmu?" I'm like, be honest, be honest. Is this going to be your first time? And a lot of people are like, "Yeah, this will be my first time playing." And man, you should have seen. The reactions, not from these people, not from the people of the group, but on the internet in general, of how people responded to Shinmu. There were some people that were like, this game's amazing. And then there were some people that were like, why does anyone ever like this game ever in the history <laughs> of gaming? And I was laughing so hard. I'm like, oh my God, because these were the same people who were like, oh my God, this is going to be the best game ever. I've been hearing so much great things about it. I'm going to finally play it. And then you realize this game. It's so dated. It's it's one of those games that did a lot for its time, but revolutionary. Yeah, it was revolutionary, yeah. and you can't you can't take the thunder from Shinmu. I mean, if it wasn't for Shinmu, a lot of games that we have today would not be a thing. I mean, it completely revolutionized sandbox gaming. But with that being said, you play it, and I myself played it, and I was like, man, this game really hasn't aged well. Because, I mean, the first three hours is pretty much a walking sim. And, like, Rio's, like, asking people, he was, like, you know, asking about the black car, and he was asking if there was, like, any Chinese people. And they're like, oh, there's a Chinese restaurant. And it was like, everyone you asked, you know, he'd always just walk up, he's like, do you know Chinese people? You know, <laughs> it was just... It was just so monotonous. It was so like walking sim fetch quest, and that's why I got distracted. And I spent like two thousand yen on capsule toys and playing that, uh, going into U Arcade and playing Hang On. I was like, well, this isn't exactly Club Sega, but it'll do. It'll do. <laughs> I'd, ha I'd have to play some Lucky Hit, you know. Yeah. Um, no, it's one. I had a friend. Shout out to to Rob Luther from the Retro Junkies and and Turtle Flakes and a, a brand new dad. Once again to Young oh, yeah. Tamara, congratulations. Uh, we were talking and he was like, man, Shinmu 1 and 2's out. He's like, did you know? And I'm like, yeah. And like he had never played it. So I gave him a little bit of a, a warning. You know, I was like, you know, kind of told him what it is. I was like, it's it's really awesome if you kind of played it before. It was really awesome 20 years ago. I was like, now at this time, it's it's a little tough, you know. And of course me, I'm always pushing Yakuza. But I think it'd be even tougher and like, 
I'd be really curious to see if people played Yakuza and then played Shinmu afterwards, like what they thought, uh, because a lot of people are playing it for the first time and they've heard so much. And I just, I picture, and it is not, I have a little bit of, you know, it's shtick when I'm always like, you know, Shinmu sucks. It's just, it, it's all in jest, um, kind of. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I just kind of wonder, you know, to see the people act afterwards. But it's just, uh, you know, like if you'd played Yakuza, I imagine that just being a little bit more faster paced, you know, more fights. Whereas I love the fights where Shinmu 1 really only had that one fight at the end. Uh, most of the other things were like Q2Es. And, uh, you know, like I said, 20 years ago, yeah, it was amazing. But now, I, I mean, at the end, I still think it's cool because people wanted it. And I do hope people get Shinmu 3. And I hope it's everything they wanted it to be. Uh, but, it, you know, it's just one of those. Like, like, does it? It's one of those good tests. Like, does it stand the test of time? You know? Yeah. Like I said, that's up to y'all to decide when you play it and see, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, it's good that someone – has a nice affordable way to play it on modern consoles because at the end yeah. of the day it is a it is a good port i mean and that's what it is it's not a remaster because the the cut scenes are still in four by three the audio hasn't really been cleaned up i like the fact that you have modern controls like you can actually move around with the joysticks which you couldn't do in the dreamcast and uh xbox version you had to use the down pad which really felt awkward and uh, the load times are a lot faster. They're very fast. There's almost like almost no load times. But other than that, I've been playing like uh, Siggy, a fart for a Messalina. What? Mm, that it sounds it, insane. Yeah, I actually just recently put up a review for it. It's a um, a two D platformer, and you're playing as a knight, and you stumbled upon this mermaid. And you try to hit on her, like you kind of sneak up wanting to say hey to her, and you fart, and she gets scared and swims away. And um, it, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's sounds, it's, sounds kind of funny. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it looked it, a little ghouls and ghostish from the uh, the picture. I didn't actually play the game, just the, the artwork on it. I guess being the knight, you know. My my only my only gripe I will say is that it is a short game. And your last, your I mean, the last boss of World One is uh, Hulk Hogan, and wow, yeah, you're about you're fighting him, and I was like, okay, well, after Hulk Hogan, I'm gonna go to the next, to the next world, you know. But that was it. It was only 20 levels. I beat the game in about an hour, but I mean, it's a five dollar game on the eShop. It's like three ninety nine on uh, Steam, and it's five bucks on PS4 and Xbox One. Not bad. Not I. I can't wait for the sequel. They said they're coming out with a sequel and it's going to be longer. And I'm like, hopefully it's like more than two stages. Yeah, that might help. I guess sometimes it's like five bucks. Like you can't really expect uh, too much, you know? Exactly. And uh, what what have you been playing, James? I've been playing a few. I will too really quick give a uh, my Shinmu tip uh, from 20 years ago that if you would like to get lots of money when you get the job driving the forklift, I would suggest – going backwards on the track if you go backwards on the track you will still get the money it will use time but you will be able to have like unlimited runs where it's usually a timed event you only got to go do it for you know so many times uh, going backwards kind of changes that and allows for lots of uh, toy capsule machine money which is what i did uh <laughs> i picked up a couple of about three uh kind of metroidvania style games on the switch i got hollow knight which uh, I'd heard about for a while and been really curious about. Uh, I got The Prison, Fall of Light, and I also got Ghost 1.0. Uh, playing these, honestly, I only played about 10 minutes or so of each one. Uh, Ghost 1.0 was the first one, uh, which I got really confused because it, it had the uh, the reticule to shoot. And it was like, you know, move the the right stick to aim. And I don't know, I got right and left mixed up. And I'm trying to like walk and aim at the same time with the same stick. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And then I was like, oh, oh yeah, stupid me. Okay, I got it. Uh, that one was probably my least favorite, Ghost 1.0. Uh, Hollow Knight seems really good. Heard lots of good things about it. Uh, the little bit I played, I, I really enjoyed. But the one that kind of grabbed me the most was the Prison Fall of Light. Uh doesn't you know necessarily look as good as the other ones it, it looks kind of the cruddiest there's just something about the graphics that's just not like super clear but there's still like all these like flowers on the ground when you run around kind of made me think of okami a little bit uh which i did pick up okami hd 
uh, and I, I have not played it yet, uh, but that was one I always enjoyed. But uh, yeah, the Prison Fall light I was really digging, and most of all, I talked about it before still, is uh, Pato Box on the Switch. Oh, yeah. I think it's on Steam, too. It's the Boxing Duck. Uh, been playing it a bit more, and man, I'm really loving this game. Like, if you're a fan of Punch Out, uh, it's it's got that. I always love the kind of silly boxing games like that, and uh, you know, you get a few that kind of hold up the punch out. Like it, it, that's been a game that's really just been hard to beat. That formula, uh, Counter Punch on the GBA was pretty good, but pl- uh, Pato Box just mixes in so much more. Like you'll have your fight. And then you go into a level, kind of like an adventure mode. Like you might have to collect things. The one I'm on now, uh, you're in a casino. You actually have to gamble to get up enough money to get into the fight. Uh, but the fight's uh, very smooth. Uh, I really enjoyed it much more than the arcade punch out because uh, I, I didn't really like the way that was set up. This one just feels more like the you know, Nintendo version, the NES version of uh, punch out. Just very smooth. You're dodging punches, but then they add in some wacky things. Like you might have some electric beams come out that you have to dodge. Uh, you know, things you have to duck. Lots of like sometimes some uh, robots will come out that you have to punch. But it still it still feels like Punch Out. You know, it's a uh, even Super Punch Out got a little bit wackier. Uh, it's all black and white. Kind of makes you think of Mad World. Uh, but it's just it's this whole story of this duck. He gets stabbed in the ring, and he's got to find out you know who did it and get his championship back. And this whole corporation is out to get him, and it's this whole crazy story. But I mean, I'm telling y'all, like if you love Punch Out, you know, like I do, it's definitely one worth checking out. Uh, it's super fun. Probably it might have been on sale at one point, uh, but I think I think it was about fifteen bucks. Uh, so I could see it dropping some, but I mean, I, it's one I didn't regret and I've really been having a blast. I've only played it on handheld and, uh, I'm thinking of trying it out like on the big screen. Cause I was like, I think it would just look really cool and I might have a little bit, uh, easier time on the fights, but, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of been my, my punch out fulfillment for now. You know, hopefully we'll get a full on punch out title. But uh, for right now, man, I'm really cool with uh, Pato Box. And uh, hell, I wouldn't mind seeing like a little Mac Adventures, you know, kind of have him fighting and in between the levels for his training. You could have like other things going on or like little missions to do. I think it'd be just a, a really good mixture. But I mean, it's a it's an awesome game. I highly recommend that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's pretty much with me. I mean, is, is there anything else that uh, you've been playing, James, or I think it's pretty good to wrap up? Yeah, that's about it. The most of it, like I said, those three Metroidvanias that were pretty cool, and Pato Box, which is the the, the recommendation of the week for me. I need to check that game out. I, I remember seeing gameplay footage of it, and I'm like, man, I need to really check this out. But it's yeah, really- it's it's really cool, man. It just it it definitely just it has that punch out feel. You know, not many really give that to me, but that's one, and it just mixes in uh, other little elements to it, and it's just a really awesome game. Well, speaking of checking out, if you guys are listening to us on iTunes or Podomatic.com, be sure to rate the show. Give us a little review. It really helps us uh, spread out and then find other listeners and be like, hey, we like video games. Let's listen to these guys. Also, check us out on YouTube.com slash Xander Scullion for previous episodes uh, because I know iTunes and Podomatic doesn't have all of our episodes, but you can go back and listen to the playlist, the Exodus Gaming Podcast playlist on youtube.com slash Xander Scullion and I also have other content as well including reviews, discussions uh, I get a lot of reviews coming I mean a matter of fact I got like five games sent to me in a matter of a week so I'm going to be very very busy I just got done with Siggy I'm going to be working on uh, Gal Gun 2 very soon uh, another game called Spectrum, uh, Fall of Light, and Cosmic Star Heroin. Those are like the games I'm going to be working on. Today. Oh, you got Fall of Light. Okay, that's one of the ones I was playing. That one's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, uh, Definitely, definitely, guys, uh, check it out. And uh, as always, guys, thanks for all the support. And as always, happy gaming. Have a pleasant evening, everybody.